Hi, and welcome to More Human, More Resources, the HR podcast for entrepreneurs. I'm Vicki Brown, your host and CEO of Vidominale Enterprises. As a serial entrepreneur, I understand that having the right expert help has been critical to my success. That's why I'm dedicated to telling you, in plain language, what's going on in the world of HR that might impact your business and what you need to do about it. With real, actionable tips to help you master that list of must-dos and grow your leadership muscle. First things first, the information contained in this podcast is provided for general purposes only and is not to be considered legal advice. Your decision to adopt or not adopt any practice or procedure mentioned in this podcast is solely yours, and we bear no responsibility for the outcome. We urge you to always consult legal counsel and other appropriate licensed professionals. And with that, let's get into the show. You're listening to Season 2, Episode 41, Wage and Hour. If you run a company, particularly in California, or have a team reporting to you, I'm sure you've heard the term. And most of the time, it's said with a feeling of dread, like, oh, they're making a wage hour claim, or you don't want to do that. It runs afoul of wage hour. That's because wage and hour violations are the most frequent employment law mistakes that employers make, and they usually end up being very expensive. So trying to avoid them is definitely the way to go. But in fact, it's really easy to get wage hour rules wrong or simply not know the rules at all. So in this episode, I'm going to review the top wage hour mistakes that companies make. So you won't. The first one is simply not calling an employee an employee. That's right. Misclassifying an employee as an independent contractor when they don't meet the independent contractor eligibility requirements is kind of a massive wage hour violation. And it's a cascade effect, because if it's determined the person really should have been a regular employee, well, then there are all the employer responsibilities that haven't been met. Payroll taxes haven't been withheld or paid. They weren't covered under workers' comp. They may have incurred overtime. They may not have been paid at the right minimum wage rate. And in fact, they may not even have been paid often enough. So getting the employee versus independent contractor thing wrong can be what I call a bedrock mistake, because there are all sorts of mistakes that can sit on top of that one wrong move. Next, let's say you get the independent contractor question right, and you've classified the person as an employee. Well, you still might go the wrong way in setting the status of the employee. Is their job eligible for overtime or not? Meaning, are they exempt or non-exempt? Again, getting this one wrong leads to getting a whole host of other wage hour questions wrong. If you decide they aren't eligible for overtime when they actually should have been overtime eligible, well, then again, you're going to miss a lot of employer responsibilities. First and foremost, you aren't going to pay them overtime, and that's a huge wage hour no-no. Then there are the other things like tracking their time, meal breaks, rest breaks, how often they get paid. And if you're puzzled about everything on that list, Well, don't worry, because I'll go into detail on them as we go along, because surprisingly, they're actually the other wage hour mistakes the companies make. Next up is not hitting the minimum wage standards. Now, there is a federal minimum wage, but a lot of states, and sometimes even down to the city, have their own minimum wage guidelines and rules. In fact, California is one of those states, and they have a minimum hourly rate for non-exempt employees, but they also have a minimum or floor wage for exempt or salaried employees. And if you pay someone under that exempt minimum rate, even if they hit all the other eligibility guidelines, you have automatically pushed them over into the non-exempt category. And that brings with it all the non-exempt requirements, paying overtime, meal and rest breaks, etc. I keep talking about meal breaks. Well, that's another one of the wage hour biggies. And one interesting fact, the next few mistakes I'm going to talk about all are related to non-exempt employees. That's because there are more restrictions around how you handle your non-exempt team members. So back to meal breaks. Now, this mistake is frighteningly easy. Non-exempt employees have to have a meal break of a minimum of 30 minutes for each five-hour shift that they work. And if they don't take a meal break or take it too late or if it's too short, 
Well, then the company owes them a penalty. So let's say Tina takes her meal break five and a half hours after she started her shift. Well, that's a late meal break, so the company owes her a penalty of one hour's wage. Or let's say she takes 15 minutes instead of 30 minutes. Well, the minimum break time is 30 minutes. So again, the company owes her a penalty of one hour's wage. Now, there are additional rules around the meal break, but the upshot here is if you violate those rules, you owe the employee one hour's wage as a penalty. And that penalty needs to be paid in the same pay period the violation occurred. This leads nicely into rest breaks. And again, I'm going to focus on California's guidelines. Non-exempt employees have to get a rest break of no less than 10 minutes. Now, the number of rest breaks they're due and when they happen are dependent on the length of their shift. Although rest breaks usually aren't tracked on a time card the way meal breaks have to be, you still have to be very careful that you fully relieve the employee of any duties during both the meal and rest breaks. And again, if this doesn't happen, well, then there's that hour penalty thing again. And just for clarity, meal breaks are usually unpaid time. Rest breaks, on the other hand, have to be paid. And by the way, here's a fun fact. The standard rest break is usually 15 minutes. Well, that's because over the years with the whole, the rest break has to have absolutely no work responsibilities attached to it thing, that extra five minutes is two and a half minutes to go to the break and two and a half minutes to return from the break. So voila, 15 minutes. And finally, here's a wage hour factoid many people don't know. There are laws around when and how often you pay your employees. Exempt employees can be paid monthly, and again, there are rules around when those payments have to happen. Non-exempt employees, on the other hand, have to be paid at least twice a month. And yes, they also have rules around when those payments have to happen and what they have to include. And the final mistake is what's included in someone's final pay and when that final pay happens. Again, get that wrong, and the waiting time penalty kicks in, and it could be costly. I have a number of episodes that go into detail on all these guidelines. I'll include a list of them in the show notes. So take care not to accidentally wander into the deep end of wage hour. Review your responsibilities with counsel so you can be sure you're doing it right from the start. If you found this information helpful, please leave a review and tell a friend. Thanks for spending the time. Until next week, same time, same place.